Hello, welcome to Creature Corner. My name is Jared Krzyzewski. I'm a creature and character concept artist working in the industry today. Creature Corner is sponsored by Lenovo and AMD. Thank you to our sponsors for letting me hang out in my garage and spew my weird stuff at you guys. Uh, Matt Millard is off tonight. Uh, he has been working tirelessly uh, to uh, to get us ready for Monster Palooza, which is right around the corner. So Matt is uh, is taking a well deserved night off. Um, knowing him, he's probably working till three, four in the morning because he's crazy like that. But we love him. We love Matt. He has really been um, uh, the the anchor, the keystone of this operation of uh, getting us all the way on the road to Monster Palooza. <laughs> if you don't know what Monster Palooza is, Monster Palooza is a monster convention happening the first weekend of June in Pasadena, California. Uh, it is a spectacular event. They have monster makeup demos and prints and effects and t-shirts and toys and uh weird monsters happening all around so uh uh if you have not been to monster palooza you gotta go uh if you like creatures if you like monsters if you like uh celebrities signing autographs if that's your jam uh Come on down to Monster Palooza. I myself, with Matt Millard, uh, we are going to be there at our booth, um, uh, uh, presenting ourselves to the people as monster people ourselves. So uh, it's going to be very exciting. We have some surprises in store. We'll probably be live streaming uh, the whole time too. Uh, turn my sound up. Is that any better? It might be your sound. I don't know. It's probably your sound. I'm good. Okay, James says I'm good. If James says I'm good, I'm good, and then it might be it might be your sound. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyway, Monster Palooza coming up. Come hang out with me and Matt. We're gonna have a good time. We are located uh, right across from the concession stand. So get a hot dog, uh, get some pretzels, and then come over and say hello to us. Uh, maybe buy a T-shirt if you want. Uh, but we're excited uh, to, to, to be there. Um, it's something that we've been planning for, well, kind of off the cuff, but we've been planning it for a few months. Um, anyway, uh, Monster Palooza coming up. Uh, I'm excited for it, and I hope, uh, hope you guys are too. Anyway, we got some ZBrush sculpting to do. Uh, so we're gonna do some ZBrush sculpting today. Um, we're in May. We're in the merry month of May, which is also in creature circles known as Mermay. Uh, Mer May. So uh, that's the plan for tonight is uh, I'm going to be doing uh, uh, some very scary fish mermaid creature. Uh, and we're going to be taking that uh, kind of to the next level. Uh, so I'm going to be drawing inspiration from the classic Disney a uh, little mermaid with some spooky twists in there uh mainly i'm thinking the mermaid is kind of like a pale man uh fleshy creature monster it's kind of where i'm going with it uh because i love the uh pale man so much uh one of my like favorite all-time creature designs so i'm going to be taking a lot of inspiration from this especially his little foldy flaps Right? Look at those things. I love uh, I love foldy flaps. I don't care who knows it. Um, so I'm going to be taking inspiration from this a little bit of In's Mouth. I want to do some, you know, slimy monster stuff. And then uh, get something, uh, uh, you know, really like these kind of foldy flaps. Anyway, um, so that's where I'm going to be taking my inspiration from. Very foldy, uh, uh, pale creatures, a little bit of the 
the Neo morph in there, maybe as some inspiration as well. Anyway, so uh, what I've got is I've got my basic character buck, my female buck, uh, that I use for various projects. Uh, it's always nice to have something kind of broken up into sections so I can move things around quickly. Um, so when I'm working on a project, I'm, I'm usually pulling from one of my base meshes in my library and just building up from there. Um, so I recommend if you don't have a buck like this, uh, spend some time with anatomy and, and, and make one for yourself. It's, it's like a little action figure that you get to play with, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, slicing it up kind of at uh, various points of articulation so I can make uh, fast changes as I like. All right, uh, so uh, I'm going to be using my basic buck to get started. And I've also got this kind of cool coral base that I sculpted for another thing a very long time ago. So I'm going to use this as kind of a jumping off point. I, I decided to go with the classic uh, Little Mermaid surfacing uh, pose. And uh, that's what I went with here, right on the butt, of course. So basically, I just kind of uh, posed it up real quick. I selected uh, my my angry angry face sculpt, which uh, I do for everything pretty much, uh, and then just pose the arms, pose the legs together, and uh, that's going to be the uh, basic starting pose that I'm going to go with. Uh, as far as inspiration goes, I you know I talked about the pale man a little bit, uh, but I was also thinking about uh, hagfish. Uh, just because they scare me, they're very slimy, which is gross, and I like gross things. Uh, and uh, that's look at that face. Uh, that's a face a mother can love. All right, look at that beauty. Look at that beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a, a kiss worthy uh, pucker right there. Anyway, so a little bit of hackfish, and then. Uh, uh, my usual kind of uh, practical effects and nature inspiration. I also really like these bundles of worms. They're called tube effects worms, and they're, uh, I guess, found in, in kind of like sewagey, toxic places. So that's kind of the source of inspiration there. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to start diving right into it. And we're going to start making some gross uh, mermaids. So stick around. That's what we're going to be doing. I split off the head and the body here. Um, so now I'm just going to take the body and pretty much merge it together. Um, I might split off the uh, breasts here just so I have more control over those. Thank you, Senior Saito. We're going to make it. A really gross mermaid. We're going to make a gross mermaid today. Um, split that off. Okay, so now the breasts are there so I can uh, uh, work on those separately. And then I'm going to go ahead and merge the body together. I can do this with Dynamesh or Remesh by Union. Let's see. Let's see if uh, Remesh even works. Yeah, see? There we go. Okay. So it's all meshed together. Everything's kind of hollowed out. Now we just blend. And I'm going to use a little bit of Sculptress here to blend these together. This is what's nice about having your own kind of mannequin like this is that uh, it's yours whenever you need it. Blending this all together. The feet are gonna get, the, the legs are gonna get blended too at some point. I might just uh, replace them entirely. I think I'm gonna inflate the legs together. 
It's going to be much more wormy than mermaidy. Okay. So you see the little holes in there? Don't worry about those. Let me worry about those. Okay. A little welding. Because one question I get asked a lot is, you know, Jared, how do you sculpt wrinkles? And there's a lot of different ways. So I thought this would be a fun exercise in sculpting some wrinkles. You just merge the body together. Merge the, uh, the merge those legs. It's a mutant mermaid created by toxic waste and fusion of multiple animals. Yes, I love that. Yeah, I like uh, I like it when uh, they got a lot of things going on. Big fan of toxic waste monsters. Blending it up. Eventually, I'm going to build out, you know, a little bit of an ocean here. I'm going to need like a little dynamic scenario. Did I see Guardians uh, Volume 3? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, I had the pleasure of working on it. Um, and uh, I had a few things make it into the movie, which was very cool. Uh, largely, I was responsible for designing the uh, Orgo Sentry. Let's see if I can pull up a good, uh, there you go. There's Nathan Fillion. There we go. So, uh, low res picture here, but, uh, yeah, I was responsible for designing this, uh, Orgo Sentry. Uh, it was built by the, uh, amazing, uh, people at Legacy Effects. Um, and I, you know, I heard they had to build like 30 of these, uh, because they had stunts and actors and other things. Uh, I'm told that the costume weighed about like 45 pounds and was uh, incredibly difficult to move in. But I. I... God, that was badass! <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, anyway, I love the movie. I got a chance to see it uh, last, uh, last week. Uh, I got an early screening with the uh, crew. So I saw a lot of uh, my good friends there from Legacy Effects, um, just like really the nicest people uh, you could ever hope to work with. Um, they've always treated me so kindly. Um, and I feel uh, very, very grateful to have uh, uh, had a small part in that uh, film. Um, had some other things. Uh, make it in, but uh, in the interest of spoilers, I will uh, I will spare you all the spoileries. But what did you think about it? What did you think of Guardians 3? Let me know. Have you seen it yet? Um, personally, I loved it. I thought it was the... Uh, my It's my favorite of the trilogy, not just because I have a small part in it, but like also because um, I just thought it was just a beautiful send off for the characters, uh, for for James Gunn as uh, you know the the one helming these projects, um, and I'm sure they they all felt that way too. They they one thing that um, really impresses me is like how much he shares 
from the set and um, the making of and the way he supports his actors and crew. Um, I, I think that's really, really, uh, really important. Uh, you know, and, and I think he gets, um, he gets that like sharing the magic with everybody is exciting. That's why we love movies to begin with. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great movie. Uh, hands down, uh, probably one of my favorite Marvel movies in recent memory. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited and, and excited to see what, uh, gun is going to do with DC. I, you know, I think he's, uh, proven his chops as a director and as a storyteller over and over again. Peacemaker was amazing. Yeah, dude. Um, Really, really loved it. Hope to see more of it. There you go. Okay, so I got a big wormy tail here. And I might have multiple wormy tails. I don't know. Just getting that tube in place, and I want it to kind of like wrap around. So you get a stroke and go to the curve, lock start, lock in. Those are going to be your best friends here. Because then that means that you can move it around. And lock start just holds the, the end position here. One of my favorite toys to play with. Excellent. My boy. That's my boy. And maybe her tail's not quite um, up so far, but it's just kind of like wrapped around. Also, make sure you turn on bend end. I'm going to use this. We're going to create a very wormy tail. A very wormy tail. So first comes the block out, right? Then you can do the details. Isn't she lovely? Okay, split mass points. So I got that tail. I'll separate like. So usually I like to work with elements as separate as possible, merge everything together at the end, sync it together. Next up, we're going to start uh, messing with her face here. And we're going to start turning her into a creature with some folds. Really love these kind of folds. Let's see what we do. Now, because I'm paranoid, I like to duplicate the mesh. So I have a backup here. And now I also uh, mark uh, on my undo menu. This is for like history recall or project history. A lot of good reasons for this, but I like starting with a, a, a human as a base mesh, um, as opposed to just starting from a sphere from scratch. Uh, the reason why is that, um, I mean, basically long and short of it is that it gives me the structure right away. Then I can just, I, you know, I, I've got the architecture of the building. Rest is just details. Let's see, 
Uh, hello, Andrew, sir. You've got a magnetic surprise for me. Yes. We will see you there. Uh, what are some movie monsters you like from bad movies? One that I like is the zombie boyfriend from Prometheus. Yeah. Uh, where he where he kind of like distorts and turns into a, a zombie. Actually, like I like that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of bad movies uh, with creatures that I like, and I, it's I'll have to think of them because uh, that could go a lot of fun ways. to think creatures from bad movies there's so many it's not like creatures tend to uh, inhabit you know oscar winning films except for like shape of water so there you go This is going to give me the structure right away that I need. Okay. So build up, smooth down. Let's get rid of the nose. We're going to go a little bit skull-like with it. Skulls are just always genuinely scary. Typically put a little skull in there. Which kind of looks like piggy right now. It'll get scarier, I promise. <laughs> yes, I'm excited. Excited to see you all at Monster Palooza. See. Favorite monsters from bad movies. I mean, not a bad movie by any means, but I do love, since Del Toro's on the brain, uh, I, I really love the Mimic um, from the movie Mimic. Uh, Del Toro did not have a good experience of uh, directing this film. Um, and I think he was working in a rigid Hollywood system or, or I think Harvey Weinstein's involvement was also difficult. Uh, but I, I, I love the mimic, the scene when they kind of put the shells together and you see the, the creature reveal. Again, not a bad movie by any stretch, um, but, but not as beloved as maybe it should be. Yeah, this, I mean, so you can see the creature parts fit together and mimic the human face ah so cool kind of looks like he had a little mustache that's just rat that's just cool i don't know what the i don't think that's this uh the judas breed that's what they were called giant bug monsters again not as uh maybe not as uh beloved as it should be but Definitely deserves a second watch. Kind of like small, very slit eyes. You have a very sharp, fangy teeth as well. 
I'll just keep these teeth as kind of a sketch in there, and then I will uh, go in and do some proper, some proper toothies. Kind of reminds me of, of Splice a little bit. I love that big uh, head shape from from that movie. Also, a little bit of cold skin in there. If you if you ever saw that movie, we will we will get away from uh, some of these uh, more tropey uh, mermaid kind of thing, you know, creature monsters, and we'll. We'll add, you know, some flair of our own. Okay, let's start getting some clavicles and then get some folds in there too. I'm going to go ahead and merge the upper arms together. We'll leave the hands separate so we can continue to work on those later. Split hidden, take these, go to your gear, remesh by union, boom, back to symmetry, blend it all together. Get, it will get very sinewy and wrinkly very soon. First, just kind of start around the edges, you know. Now, I want to put some wrinkles in there. Here's to see how some very beloved movies, the directors hated making them. Like Jurassic Park put them. It was more Spielberg's fault in terms of the movie at the same time. Not sure what you mean by Jurassic Park, but if you're talking about the sequels, perhaps. I don't think they knew. I mean, I'm sure they knew Jurassic Park was going to be hit. Um, yeah, directors, uh, uh, you know, they all kind of cultivate their own vibe. Um, that's why it's, it's so singularly, um, up to the, you know, up to the director on how a movie comes out. Kind of the, the culture that they create on set. Grab sphere, it's a good old sphere. Split mass points. Take this, I'm going to divide it a couple times and jump into cloth hole. Let's go to stroke. Start with the uh, cloth. Here, you got to go up to the dynamics, and I'm just going to up the firmness a little bit, and boom, neck wrinkles. Like, ew. Again, I'm going to be uh, looking at the Pale Man a lot. 
thinking about kind of rows of nasty, gross, haggy kind of skin. And back to the reference here, where it kind of bunches up maybe around the head. So I might duplicate this, another one. Heyo, what's up, Sterling? How's it going, man? Shout out to Afray. 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 Yes, sir. We're going to make some nasty mermaids. Go up on the ear, kind of tweak the ear a little bit. It's got to look human, but not too human. But just human enough. Oh, my evening is uh, quite lovely. We're just getting started. She's not quite gnarly yet, but she's. We will get. We will get to the gnar. She's a fine lass. And stitch it together. Remesh by union. But easy peasy. See, I find if you just get a quick block in on a head, it does so much. Kind of carry the, the thought of the wrinkles up past the head here. Ooh. Ooh. And then uh, we'll put in a little bit of this hagfish kind of stuff going on. Maybe we'll do that with the snake hook. Kind of gives her a little demonic kind of vibe, too. Maybe not that one. It's too, too, too demony. Pull out a little horn. And we'll just add some wrinkles around it. need much as far as brushes go you just need like standard damn standard clay build up pinch inflate and move yeah nasty gross gross neck flaps again uh, I, um, I'm calling to a lot of uh, uh, pale man here aha aha you see, you can see my influences. Again, I'm here for the neck flaps. Aren't we all? Aren't we just all here for the neck flaps? Turn that off.
We're here for the neck flaps. Oh, a uh, uh, a project of some sorts uh, that you were following. Isn't that uh, isn't that funny? Yes, very excited. Very very excited. Um, yeah, I've been working with Afray. Afray? I want to say Afray um, for a little bit now, and everyone's just been really uh, kind and welcoming. Um, so I'm just having a great time, and um, I'm, I'm uh, excited to be involved. I I learned about the. I, I really only learned about the SCP Wiki um, not too long ago. Um, I want to say it was like kind of a, 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 a recent find. And then uh, to hear that they were uh, building a game around it, I just thought was the coolest thing. Um, so I'm, I'm truly just honored to, to get to have a small part in it. And uh, 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 that's my man Sterling right here. Uh, Sterling is also on uh, on the team and uh, learning a lot from Sterling. We're having a great time. My man. My man. Right, all right, all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're just making some monsters. Just making some good monsters here. Okay, so wrinkles, wrinkles. Here we go. You want to sculpt some wrinkles? You need two brushes. You need the standard brush, right? Yeah, I know, right? The standard brush. Big swing for the fence there. Uh, and you need the Damien standard brush. Okay? Yeah. And uh, you just kind of got to go for it. Um, you just got to you just got to go for it. Uh, but the key is depth, right? We're really carving in to the depth of the surface to get that shadow to read. And then you can uh, use pinch and inflate and kind of float the forms together. And then pinch down the ends here as well. Because that's what creates the overlap. That's what that's what we're looking for. Hey, overlap. That's pretty good. Yeah. See. Sometimes, oh, just sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, giant head. I like what you've got. Yeah. See. Now she's looking good. So let's get some arm wrinkles here. Uh, you want to think about your pinch points where the the forms are pinching together, usually like at the armpits here. You can kind of see this uh, with the pale man. Look at the look at those goobers. Look at those wrinkly little goobers. Yeah, right in the right in the pits. Let's get flappy, baby. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is that ZBrush is camera based. So if you're not getting the angle that you want, you need to, to tumble around the sculpt and get underneath it. So Damien Standard sometimes works off of the, the camera. So if you get underneath the sculpt, Can really get that that wrinkle that you're looking for. So carving that depth in there. Start emphasizing her scapula. Oh, Daddy. I got a guest. I'm not mad at you anymore. Oh, he's not mad at me. Yay! Oh, he came in just to say that? All right, bye. Okay, very cool. <laughs> I 
I didn't know that he was mad at me. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> that's that's kids, man. They'll just switch on a dime. Justice, what's up, man? Welcome. Good to see you. Yeah, what did I do? I didn't do anything. What, what did I do? You'll just find that you're always wrong. Yes. You're always, always wrong. Pretty fun. Let's see if I can uh, work on this neck position a little bit. So I'm going to transpose mesh. And maybe do a little masking. Wash that in a little bit. Okay. Now let's go back. Transpose. Oh, you always thought it was based on, uh, uh, you didn't know it was based on the normals. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, camera based. That's kind of the trick with a lot of ZBrushes. A lot of it is camera based. So if you're not getting the angle on something, you got to uh, get underneath it or on top of it. And the other thing is just depth, is just pushing into the surface enough. Um, one thing I see a lot with uh, students um, or new sculptors is that they, they're hesitant to really uh, dig into the surface. You gotta dig, baby, you dig. We're gonna put, put uh, some like gross spiny things, kind of like these. I wanna do more of these around there. So maybe going down the spine, uh, find some other ways to kind of uh, push the silhouette a little bit. When your arms are rotated forward, the scapulas rotate outward like this. Mutant. Build up, smooth down. Cardinal rule. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think some anatomy errors that I see from students is usually they're just not looking at enough real anatomy. Um, that, that's the big thing is that they're not looking at references. Um, so you cannot sculpt what you don't understand. So you have to be looking at references. I, I, I have a lot of references built, um, over the years and um you just you just gotta use reference so the big thing that i say with students is they just don't they're not looking at reference um or or think that it's uh maybe cheating um but reference 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 artist is only as good as their references so i i think that's a that's the big one um, and because there are a lot, there's a lot of really good, uh, there's a lot of really good information out there. 
Um, so, so it's there's no excuse not to be not to to find it. Um, the the things that I recommend the most for anatomy are um, is anatomy for sculptors. Um, so hands down, this is like my my number one resource that I recommend. Uh, it's the thing that I'm looking at when I'm sculpting. Um, there's a lot of other good information um, that I that I grab, but anatomy for sculptors is like hands down like my my number one. Right. So there's also they also offer a. Um, I'll just pop this in the chat. Room. Um, so there's that. And also they have, um, this, uh, uh, this one. And so they have this Ecorche that's actually, yeah, right. Um, that's actually a 3d model, uh, that you can tumble around. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Uh, again, really, really excellent information. So I get up there on, on details all the time. So this is what I'm using. I'll also pop this in the chat for you. <clears throat> so uh, fully, fully recommend this as well. So, you know, in order to sculpt something believable, you have to understand the architecture, the structure of anatomy. And it's just good for Anatomy is good for you. My pleasure. Emmanuel, what's up, man? You are welcome. <laughs> Dude, nice to see you. My pleasure. Dude, yeah, hell yeah. Sharing of knowledge. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah, that's my man. That's my main man. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I recommend looking at. Truly one of my favorite, one of my favorite resources. Um, but then the other thing is, is, uh, it's just practice and, and you just got to practice. Um, I, when I was learning anatomy, when I was first really studying it, uh, I would get an app on my phone. Uh, there was a speed anatomy app. And uh, it was really great, and I would quiz myself on anatomy just to get better. Um, there's a lot of other good uh, apps, or uh, uh, there's a good YouTube channel. Um, let me uh, Ken Hub. Um, this is a little bit uh, more nitty gritty anatomy. Um, so this is. Uh, uh, like this is deep tissue stuff. So this is like, if you really want to learn the the deep anatomy, not, not just kind of like superficial for sculpting, um, but actual like really learning the names of everything. Um, there's a lot of really good resources in Ken Hub as well. They also have a good YouTube channel um, that I recommend checking out as well. I'm going to pop that in there. Um, but yes, Ken, Ken hub is also great. This is, if you really want to learn the names of muscles and their attachment points, uh, and their, uh, uh, you know, insertion points. Um, and do you really need to know that stuff on that level? No, but, uh, it will make you better. If you do learn, you will, uh, you'll pick up things and you'll be like, Oh, this attaches here. And this attaches here. I didn't know where that was going at first, but I'm glad, I'm glad we made it. That's what it's about. The power is yours. The power is yours. Okay. 
and start dialing up the Dynamesh a little bit. One question I hear a lot is kind of like, when do I Dynamesh? When do I need to be Sculptorous? The answer is you got to feel it. Feel the clay. Treat ZBrush like digital clay. When do you need... When do you need it? It's like going from soft clay to hard clay, like firm clay. Standard, sprinkly. Also, I'm sorry, emphasizing the rib cage. We'll go more creaturey with the rib cage too. Start dialing up the resolution a little bit. So now, now that I need the resolution, that I'm sculpting the details, then you can start to up the resolution. Now, I figured out. I finally figured out a good technique for sculpting ribs. Um, I can't believe like it. It's taking me this long, but I finally got a good, good technique going for that. And um, I, I really, I can't believe it's taken me like this long to figure it out. What, what, what do you think you sculpt ribs? Like you end up doing like this thing, right? You try, I mean, this is one way you can definitely sculpt ribs this way. Right. So that's one way is you, you do the, the kind of like standard brush ribs kind of work up that way. Um, what I started doing was carving the negative space in. Okay, so your sternum here, you got a breastplate, comes down. And you get this little notch at the end of the breastplate. And that's, um, I believe, called the manubrium. I don't know. I'm probably wrong, but I think it's called manubrium. I'm not a doctor. I make monsters for God's sake. Uh, Dr. Krzyzewski was my thought. Basically, kind of block out the sternum here. The muscle attachments. And then you start doing the... Kind of make a little loop. We have 12 ribs, including two floating ribs in the back. I'll do this, and depending kind of like how you do this, you can make it look really emaciated. Um, in this case, it's kind of looking like gills, which is kind of cool. Totally not intentional. Or was it? Age a little bit. Let's dig in here. Rib cage. It's like Nick Nick Cage for rib cage. Yeah, happy accidents. That's how I live my life. Happily crashing from one thing to the next. So I'll kind of sculpt in a little bit and then I'll build out. Get the two columns of the abdomen. So you kind of get your midline here. Two columns of the abdomen. You have the external oblique, bony landmark of the pelvis. And we're gonna just kind of indicate some creaturey stuff here, just with some sketches.
Okay, indicating the lumbar spine in the back here. Two columns for the spinal erectors, which uh, pad the spine side to side. Again, indicate the pelvis here. This is a good space for some uh, wrinkles. It's carving that depth in there. I'll use Damien Standard to kind of carve and sketch in. And then Standard Brush to add some of the roundness of the wrinkle. Wrinkles, wrinkles. I'll work on asymmetry later. Okay. Yeah. Really want to make sure that those shoulders kind of up and out. This might require a transpose here. Kind of like she's, you know, hunching down, putting weight on her hands. This angle of the head is going to be fun to get right. Yeah, that's the Little Mermaid I want. Now one of the great, uh, uh, that's a good, uh, well not a segue, but um, if you haven't seen the movie She Creature. So one of your favorite, uh, uh, the question was favorite creatures from bad movies. Not a great movie. But man, the, this creature shreds. This she creature. Look at this guy. Look at that. Look at that face. <gasps> There's the Wilhelm. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that fun? She creature, and then she turns into this full out fish monster. Ah, so cool. Yeah. See, this face is terrifying. That's really, really cool. Look at that face. Yeah. Let's see if we can maybe find a GIF. Yeah. She creature classic. That was from uh, 2001. She creature. That's a great. Uh... Yeah. Uh, uh, well, the Winnie the Pooh movie, Blood and Honey, uh, only came about because the copyright expired. Um... There we go. Copyright expired on, on Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, the lower head is just a little bit more feral to me. Now we're back. You could go with like a classic fin right in the back. But I'm trying to go more hagfish, I guess. We'll just pull out a little bit of a spine here, though. Look 
really want to get that right angle of the uh, scapula there. And when the scapula parts, there's a little bit of a gap that can kind of appear underneath. You have the lateral back, the latissimus, which wraps over just kind of the very bottom of the scapula. Rib cage. And a little bit of pinch. A little bit of back and forth. And then it's about kind of finding the line in which the rib cage goes back. Build up, smooth down. Just going to fill it in just a Start getting the back here. More standard. Gonna start pointing these things down. Not meant to be attractive at all. Now that I've got uh, that those neck flaps, I can just go ahead and uh, cut this neck off here. Just gonna slice it off. Boom! Now it's gone. Then we can fuse the uh, the neck neck in with the body. Neck neck. By union. And see, then we can just kind of blend it all together. Remesh by union is the Hadoken. It's the Hadoken of digital sculpting. <laughs> uh. And I am Shang Tsung. That would be the reptile. Reptile. I really like that this would like hang down quite a bit. That's good. A little bit more anger in there. or malice. Just 
drop some spears in there. Our good old buddy Spear. Split mass points. There we go. While we're in here, I'm going to apply a material to this. Go ahead and fill object back. What are you guys working on? Wonder if anyone has made a mermaid that looks like those fishes that only survive in high pressure water. You mean like uh, blobfish or a lot of deep sea animals survive in that high pressure high pressure environment. So close. Yes. K. Snake hook. Turn it to be off. There we go. Catfish kind of. Whiskers. Hey, thank you, Clay. We're going to get nasty. We're going to get real nasty with this. We're going to make some gnar. More wrinkles around the head. Damien Sander is so powerful, not just because it's a it's like a sketching brush, but you can use it to erode the surface away. You can actually like scale it up and, kind of, and use it to kind of um, really carve into the surface. Got to get underneath it too. Hey, thank you so much, man. Yeah, buddy, we're having a good time. We're going to make some mermaids. Mermaids. The inspiration here is Pale Man plus Mermaid. Hey. <laughs> I got it. Neck wrinkles. Let's carve in, really dig into that surface. Some more of these flappies here.
to pull up those clavicles. They, the clavicles got lost. So I need to pull those up. I don't care what anyone says. Clavicles are scary. Clavicles can be very, very scary. Maybe a little bit more wrinkles around here, too. Breaking a little bit of symmetry. I mean, have a little crest on the top of the head. Triangles are scary. Triangles are the scariest shape. Everyone knows this. Not so much a crown, but just kind of a uh, hagfish inspired. Kind of wiggly. Get all caught up with the uh, getting all caught up with the sirens and the mermaids. I think they were out to sea for a very, very long time. And Heck yes. we know what that does to people. coming together let's take this part and let's make it some wrinkles so if I just kind of wiggle it with the cloth brush a little bit I need to subdivide one more time there we go kind of push it around a little bit now if I go back before I did that, I store morph target. It'll actually make it feel like it's sliding along the skin. I'll lower the firmness a little bit. Now watch. Okay, let's subdivide one more time. There we go. Now we got enough juice to play with. Then you take these wrinkles and you just kind of smooth them down a little bit. Voila. Easy wrinkles. Yeah, it is. Yes, you have to store a morph target first because that is telling ZBrush to hold its shape. Uh, very useful when dealing with any cloth. Hmm. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. You have to balance that right kind of amount of like uh, just enough polys without going overboard. Which 
back. Let's get to a little tapered shape here. back more wrinkles I'm gonna need some paint soon uh, how did I do the coral texture um, you know, I, if I remember correctly, I think I grabbed a an alpha. Um, I think I grabbed an alpha uh, and basically used that as kind of a stencil, a guide, and then the rest is pretty much just carved by hand. Um, I will use alphas to get me like part of the way there, and then the rest I will uh, sculpt by hand. The, the best way to get control is just the hand sculpting. Yeah. And it's pretty red. I wish there was a... I wish I had a cool, like, secret trick. That's pretty much it. Get a guide and sculpt. Sculpt away. Really got these neck flaps going. Maybe it like bloats when she's angry. She goes, oh. Back to you guessed it, Damien's standard brush. You'll float too, my friend. We all float down here. We all float down here. Yeah. I guess if there's anything that scares me, it's uh, ghost kids. Any tips or tricks on how to hide seams between two places of geo? Like, is there a way to smooth over where they meet? Kind of like, uh, uh, like this area. Let's say they're two separate pieces of geometry and you're trying to blend them together. Um, ZBrush just kind of does this neat trick of, of blending the normals together. So it looks as... Yeah. It, it, uh, so really my my advice is just to, uh, is to just blend it. Just go for it. And you just kind of have to smooth them down. But eventually they, they kind of blend together anyway. And you won't you won't see the seam at all. It's so toasty. So it's just it's just blending, I think. But in this case, I want some wrinkles. Yeah. Uh, brute force. Hey, my pleasure. Uh, brute force is is the answer for most of my my ZBrush stuff. It's just like brute force sculpt it into place. I feel like I'm in an 80s video game. I should really have my reference up. Let's pull some more reference. And I think I'm going to need more worms coming off of her. Like some like worm drapery or something. And I'm probably going to set it up in Keyshot, too. Yeah, I really need more of, like, this stuff. I need more of that. I look at that and I'm like, I need that in my life. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead and uh, just kind of preview what it's going to look like. 
another important trick is is and uh, Matt and I talk about this a lot. Is just get it into render. Just get it into uh, some kind of program so you can look at it and uh, really evaluate the forms. I even have a, a one called Mermaid Sky. Look at that. Hey, that's pretty good. She just wants to be part of your world. Aww. Yeah, see, she's lonely. Oh. Well, I I think the key is 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 really pushing into the form and um Look, lighting is uh, lighting is hard. It's its own uh, kind of bag. There's there's tricks to it. Um, but the key that I found for me with lighting is basically the the fewer lights, the better. Turn on those speculars. Action index. Let's maybe uh, lower this sunset just a little bit. Not getting the scale on the uh, scattering that I want, so I might need to change it. You change your scene units. Let's see what goes on if I go to millimeter. There we go. That looks a little better. I'm trying to get that uh, light through. Let's try centimeter. There we go. Now we're getting scattered. The key is, is you gotta you gotta dig into your sculpt because uh, when you throw a shader on top of it, it just nukes all your detail. It just all your detail just disappears. Ah, you watched uh, Renfield, yes. Heck yeah, man. Um, I really, I really don't, I really didn't do much on it. Um, I, Matt, Matt took the bulk of that and he did a, a fantastic job. Um, really just awesome work uh, from Matt. Uh, Renfield is a great movie and uh, 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 Christian Tinsley uh, was the uh, uh, head of makeup uh, for, that, for that film. And he was awesome. Let's add a little uh, light here. Oh, look at that. Ah, uh, too bright. Too bright. Need to go to look. Now we're getting, now we're getting there. I'll down a bit. Maybe let's cool the light off a little bit. Okay, 
second if I'm feeling saucy, and I am. I love it when the menu, like, is up here. There we go. And actually sample the color of the sky over here. Yeah. See, so, yeah, and and uh, looking at it in this way just helps inform a lot of the decisions you make. Um, so that's. Like right now it's telling me like, okay, I got to dig a little deeper, uh, really push the wrinkles even more, right? But I am liking the face. I want to get the um, some more teeth in there. I definitely need more of these like little noodly appendages. And uh, we'll, get, we'll get more gnarly as we go. That's the plan. See, throw, throw it into a shader. Even if it's an early sculpt, just decimate it. Throw it into some kind of render. Because it's going to help uh, inform your sculpting decisions. I think so. Oh, that's why. I think skin turned on. Here. So now I'm going to just mask out this area and then I'll sculpt up here to get that overlap wrinkle. Told you I was going to do it. What's your favorite mermaid? The fear of digging into deep into the mesh. Yeah, uh, it's uh, very, very common. It's something I see a lot. Uh, uh, is is uh, it, it's it's a hesitancy, and I don't know how how else to describe it than that. Um, you put it as brush confidence, um, which I think is also a great way uh, to do it. But uh, you got to just go for it sometimes and just, um, just make it happen. Smooth this down. There you go. Maybe one little, one more. Just, you know, as a treat. And uh, uh, masking, don't forget about masking as, as one of your go-to uh, techniques. Masking is incredibly powerful. Build it up, smooth it down. There we go, now I'm really getting that overlap that I like. All right, let's get some teeth in there. I know these are just temporary. So I'm just going to, uh, oh, don't mind that. I'm going to smooth these down. And these teeth, which are just kind of temporary to begin with, are going to become the gums. Pop a, little, a few holes in there for some like recessed gum areas. It's kind of funny, just with the 
floating eyes. All right. Now for teeth, just grab a capsule. Oops. What do you think? Just one tooth? Kind of looks like a hag tooth. Go. What do you think? Just one giant tooth? It's like, ha! Ha! No? Okay, there we go. Tip of water. Shape of Water uh, Fish Man is just so awesome. It doesn't have dental benefits. Uh, yeah, the uh, Cabin in the Woods Mermaid, classic. Just watched that not too long ago. What a great. What a great mermaid. Look at that face. Also has the uh, the wrinkles. Look at those wrinkles. Oh, yeah. Those are my favorite. I love wrinkles. Aww. Such a fun moment, too, in the whole movie. Yeah. Dental plan. Lisa needs braces. All right. Split mass points. And one thing with teeth is don't forget that they have a root. And you don't have to, to sculpt the whole root, but it's important to push, push in on the other side too. it's digging into the surface. It's an anthology show on the TVs in the 90s. Was it actually called Monsters? Because the, there was an anthology show that I remember watching as a kid called Monster. Um, I believe it was in It's a 90s show. I believe it was actually called Monster. TV, uh, man, I, I know exactly what. I think this is it. 1988 Monsters. 1988. Monsters 1988 uh, to 1990. I don't know if this is the one you're talking about, but this was definitely the show that I remember. Watching. That's uh, 1988. You want to know why I messed up? It's because of shows like that. Close. Oh, okay. Well, what?
she creature. Oh man, you you just missed the she creature talk. I was just talking about she creature. One of the great uh, mermaid monster movies. Isn't that funny? Yeah, you think you can pull one over on old Jared here? You can't pull one out of me. What do you think this is? Wow, what a great audience. Well, what a great audience. You see what I did there? I just took one tooth and I went boop, 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 boop. Doesn't matter that they're all the same right now. We will work on that. Pull out those points a little bit. That's how you get really sharp. Gnarly too. And then I'll just kind of wiggle them a little bit. Just wiggle it. Just wiggle those teeth. And they mimic uh, uh, human canine teeth just a little bit. So it's a little bit familiar. I should, you should be dead. And when you're done, boom, duplicate. Grab that and flip it around. Ah, I love it. So cute. She's so cute. Aww. She just wants a hug and a kiss. Friendship. <laughs> How did I multiply the teeth? Uh, what you do is you hold control and uh, you hover over the four corners here. So if you, that will duplicate it. And then if you just let go, it will remember the last, it will remember the distance between. So if you want them real close, you just move it off just a little bit and then go boom. What I did here, uh, let's, uh, let's do an auto group mirror. So grab this one, duplicate. Boop, 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 boop. All right. Uh I keep making on the same teeth, man. Love making teeth. If you like creatures, you'll love teeth. Ooh, she's mad. She's mad at you. She's screaming. I don't know why she needs nostrils if she's got gills. Maybe they're part of her gills or something. Uh, you wanted to, uh, to check the show from. It's on a second season and a little bit of monster makeup. From TV. Interesting. What, uh, what is it on? Is it on uh Oh it's got my man from uh from Lost. Walt Walt Love this guy, he's a great actor. 
Does he shout Walt? MGM. So it looks like uh, uh, MGM might be on Paramount. <coughs> Walt! Uh, okay. I will check it out. I will definitely check it out. But not if I have to buy Paramount Plus. Nothing against it, I just have too many streaming services. <laughs> I'm in danger! <laughs> I'm sure they're doing just fine without my money. Get some of that. Let's get some of that angry brow in there. Uh, raised by wolves. Really, uh, really bummed we're not getting another season of that. Huge bummer. I gotta get uh, I gotta get some more uh, tendrils, tentacles. I need those. So I'm gonna grab my curve tube. Told you I needed more to be worms in there. I like what you got. I like what you've got, large head. Large floating head from outer space. Okay, split mass points. Let's do some more coming off the back here. A little bit of hagfish, a little bit of pale man, and a lot of love. Do you ever see the Lav Lovecraftian horror comedy movie Glorious? As a glory. Oh, no, I have not seen that. Um, but I remember reading about it and being really intrigued. Uh, so I, I really do want to see it. Great, great movie. Uh, fun side stories. I heard the movie uh, Teeth is going to be getting a, a, a musical. If you have not seen this movie, another great little horror film. Wait, what? Have you not seen this? Oh, man. Uh, this movie. Movie. This movie is great. It's it's one of those kind of like indie, uh, indie horror films that uh, came out 2007. Uh, I, I cannot spoil this movie for you if you have not seen it, uh, but please go watch it. Please. I've been waiting for this. Yeah, I would just wait till you watch it <laughs> before you thank me. <laughs> what? I Yo, no, buddy, just you wait. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. Oh, they're yeah. so nasty. I think I'm going to pull some little, uh, BSK. I'm going to pull some little, uh, nerply, nurples from here. Is that what they're called? I'm going to call them nurples. Uh, 
Oh, in teeth, it's totally justified. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's all justified. But it is uh, disturbing. Now, we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. <laughs> what is that from? What is that from? I don't know. It's from the land of fun. Fleece Johnson, the booty warrior? Are you for real? How do you even know that reference? <laughs> okay. We're almost, we're almost there. One, two, three. Can I use the uh, sculptress with the cloth brush? Just remember that. Store more target. There we go. Ooh, so fun to play with the. It's very satisfying. One of my favorite. Brushes. Just a little bit of sculpting magic on top. Probably do something for the hands at this point. All right, I'm gonna cut that in half. Move the thumb off to the side here. Just go ahead, remesh by union, smooth it down. A little bit of inflate. We're gonna pull out some little claws. Pull out some little claws. Pull it straight out and then curve it up. Pull it out, curve it up. Now I'm gonna give her a little webby fingers, little webbies. First, I'm going to spread the fingers out a little bit. Make sure I grab that one little part that didn't move. There we go. Everything is a claw. That claw. Um, man, I hope we do. I really, really do. Um, Hellraiser was great. I love the new one. One of these days, man, I would love to work on a Hellraiser. Full on. 
Hold on, man. And is there? All right. So for uh, membranes, thin surfaces, I'm going to use... This. We're going to find curved surface. Curved surface. I'm just going to go around one. Once, twice. Oh, look at that. It's bounced into space. There we go. Hey, why are you? It's like floating off of there. Maybe I need a curved snap surface. So it'll actually snap to the surface here. Hey, that looks sort of better. Doesn't matter because we're going to do this anyway. So just create a little webbing here. Split mass points. Delete the other sided geometry. Make sure you turn on double-sided so you can see both sides. And then we're going to lift this up. We're going to turn this into a collision. So tighten. Yeah, you see what's going on? Now you know. Now you know what's happening. Go to dynamic. Collision volume. I want to make sure inflate. Now I'm going to use cloth transpose. We're just going to move it down. Look at that. Now a perfectly beautiful webbing. Okay. That's the sound I make when I make webbing. And we're going to try it again. Okay. Thing I noticed here. Oh yeah, Sterling likes that. Yeah, see? Okay. Now I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Seriously, life got so much easier when they added the cloth brushes. Okay. There we go. Let's do it again. Transpose cloth. Move it down. Oh. Let's try that again. There you go. There you go. Nice webby little hand. Go back to your regular transpose. Just pop it in just a little bit further. You have a nice webbed hand. You want to make it feel like it's taut. So you need to do that little, create those little bows in there. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's the best. I got gangs of those tricks. I got gangs of those tricks. <laughs> you are welcome. You are welcome, sir. I love webby hands. We all do. I wish I had webbed hands. Let's add a little uh, cuts in here. Hands are going to need a lot of work, but we're up to the challenge. Turn on back face mask there. Make sure, did I dynamash these? I had to. Okay. Okay, so with the, uh, now with the web that I have that uh, one sided geometry, uh, I'm going to turn on dynamic subdivision. Which is going to add that thickness, that preview thickness. In this case, I have it set up here because it's something I use a lot. 
And then when you're done, you hit apply. Boom. You got you got webby hands. Okay, mirror that over. Mirror that over. Boom, we got webby hands. Part of your world. Now, because I'm lazy and I'm not going to move the hands yet, I'm just going to move up the base to meet the hands. So you just cheat your way to success. There we go. Trying to move the thumbs. A little thumb button. Okay, so we got webs. We got worms. What's this? Oh, she got a double head. There you go. She's got a head inside of her head. What if she had like a little human face like right in the middle? Like right there. That'd be weird. I don't know. I'm not going to keep it. But it's okay. All right. Now for the uh, water, I'm going to dynamesh it. Scale it out a little bit. Hello, fingernails. Welcome, you sicko. Okay. Now for uh, water here. Ow. I made a mistake. I'm going to do this. I'm going to group by normal. That way I have this. I'm going to delete the rest of that. Subdivide this a few times. There we go. Go to surface noise. Turn on noise. We're going to frame a little mesh and we're going to go to noise plug. And we're going to pick out a Vernoy texture. It okay and we need to like really up the strength here and the size turn off regular noise and again up the scale we need this to go the other way there we go this will give it kind of an ocean vibe So you just take that, maybe do a little uh, polish by feature on it. Apply the mesh, you got to apply it. Voila, easy water. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, you guys are so nice. You're so nice. Okay, we're going to send this over to Keyshot. Take a look at it, and then I think we'll finish this up next week. Oh, yeah. Look at that beauty. Real quick, I'm just going to throw a uh, curvature in there. OK. 
Okay. I'm going to use my classic foot texture. Okay. Classic foot texture. Maybe uh, scale it down just a little bit. And maybe we'll plug this into the zero too. Boop. Not quite pale enough. I'm just going to take away some of the contrast. kind of a light pink color in the cavity. Now it's a little intense right now, but uh, to like the right, here you go, just so you can see a little bit of edge in there. Play around with a little bit of gamma. I think we also need to turn on some global illumination so we get a little bit more bounce here. Play around. Let's add some vignette. I'm pretty sure I have some like basic rocks that I can throw on this thing. They have some basic rocks somewhere. In the downloads. Mm -hmm. I'm about to find some rocks. You know what? I'll just plug it in. I'll do it myself. Boop. That's all I need. It's these little rocks right here. A little liquid. We're just blocking in elements. Back here, I'm gonna really dial back the contrast. Now, 
I might have a better option. I actually have some translucent kind of skins here. Uh, let's see if I got one. If I got a good one. Yeah, like a baby skin. Soft baby skin. More pale. in the light here. Wait, oh, five maybe? Point five. Three or two. That's better. Okay. It's feeling pretty good. Yes, we did it. We did it in a in a short amount of time. We got a, a fairly decent start to our mermaid. This is amazing. Let's view. Let's turn off the. Uh... Here we go. Boom. Do a little camera work real quick. Push the lens. Let me add a little twist. Out of your world. What? <laughs> Game, you sus fan. Okay. My depth of field didn't. Right, we'll get it back. And there she is tonight. Well, I'll let it sit for a minute. There we go. Still a work in progress. Still got a long ways to go, but I think that's pretty good for tonight. Yes. Sirens. Oh, let me get rid of that. There we go. Ta-da. We did it. There we go. There we go. Pretty fun. You know, for just uh, two hours, we got a, a good, good place to go. So I want to thank you guys for coming by tonight, coming and hanging out with me on the Creature Corner. I want to thank everybody for coming by tonight. I want to thank James for running everything behind the scenes. James, we can't do this out uh, without you. I want to thank my friend, Matt Millard. He could not be here tonight. He's just hopefully getting some very uh, some much needed rest. Uh, Matt has been working tirelessly and uh, has been the rock of this operation as we go on the road tomorrow. <laughs> If you want to contact me and say hi, my name is Jared Krzyzewski. I'm at MonsterMash042, at Jared Krzyzewski on the Instagram. Matt Millard is at ItchyTasty underscore. He just posted a lot of Renfield work. I hope you check it out. And at Matt Millard 3D, make sure you check us out. Come say hi. Let us know if you're going to Monster Palooza or not. We'd love to see you there. 
Uh, we're going to have a great time. I want to thank uh, our sponsors, Lenovo and AMD and the Noman School of Visual Effects, the MIT of Visual Effects in West Hollywood, California. My name is Jared Krzyzewski. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight, and I will see you next time on Creature Corner.